this is one of my favorite discussions. In the early 90s, psychologists were uh, looking, they were investigating, studying violent felons in prison. And when they, they saw these violent felons, they would come uh, attack each other. They would disrespect mm -hmm. each other in a slight mm -hmm. way. Then all of a sudden, the shanks come out and there's like murder, homicide. Uh, they, would, they would term this uh, toxic masculinity. Toxic masculinity. Mm -hmm. that, that's that's where, where the term The term came from, came from that. Mm -hmm. it was you, and mm -hmm. that is toxic masculinity. You stepped on my shoe, therefore I'm going to kill you. That is toxic masculinity. <laughs> when you study some of these people, they, they had mm -hmm. insane levels of testosterone and you saw there were some mental disorders included. Somehow academia now gets a hold of that term and now it means the reason why more men die from COVID is because of toxic masculinity. Global warming is because Everything. of toxic masculinity. Everything. Mm -hmm. you, and you, you spoke about that at length. Can you go into that? Yeah. And actually, there is a different version of it that was used by Robert mm -hmm. Bly back, you know, back in the day in a very different way. But, but you're right that in academia, it had quite a technical term. Yeah. Te it, and it was this very specific group of very violent incarcerated criminals. And, uh, and it's Carol Harrington, a uh, feminist scholar who I quote, I think she said that mm -hmm. before 2016, it was getting on average like 12 mentions in obscure academic journals. And then suddenly, kaboom, it broke into the mainstream mm -hmm. and became this very common term, toxic masculinity. Mm -hmm. Very rarely defined, as she says, just used generally to signal disapproval. Um, and it has been used to explain everything from recessions to wars to climate change to mask wearing to you, you, you just name it. It's the it. boogeyman. Yeah. Yeah. And, and because it's not, it's not really defined, mm -hmm. uh, it just means you can use it pretty indiscriminately. Uh, and I've come to believe that it's a very, very unhelpful term. Actually, many feminist scholars believe that now, too, because it pushes men away from the discussion. I think just putting those two words, two words next to each other is a profound error. And also just because intellectually, when you actually push people and say, okay, they'll say, no, 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 I don't mean all masculinity is bad. There's non-toxic masculinity. Right, now first we'll of all, it's like, first of all, okay, um, I still don't like this toxic, non-toxic. I actually prefer, prefer something like mature and immature. Yes. Maybe we can get into that. But it's like, okay, so, for, so what's non-toxic masculinity then? And then they'll say, mm. um, oh, I can tell you. I right? can tell you exactly what this is. What is say, I, I, whenever we get into talk, I was hoping but, to have this conversation well, they, with you on well, Dr. Phil. Say, well, I'll finish my thought, but say, yeah, they'll yeah, say good. courage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, leadership, something ambi yes, ambiguous. Yeah, something, yeah, so, yeah, and, yeah, then, and then you say to them, what, are you saying that women aren't It's exactly that? right. That's yeah. the hardest part. Women, they say, no, 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 women, yeah. women, women are equally likely to be that. <laughs> then okay. what's masculinity? So okay. what, it's like, well, it's like what Matt Walsh is. What is a woman? They can't give you a, a concrete definitive right. answer. The same thing as what's toxic so masculinity there's a, there's a or what's good and what's bad. They, yeah, yeah, but because, the bigger problem, I think, is, this, is just this language around it. Yeah, well, and that's what I was going to say is like, I have, I'm on the record saying there's no such thing as toxic masculinity. There is only masculinity. And there's the aspects of it that are useful to a female imperative and then the aspects of it that are inconvenient. So the 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 guys doing the you know stupid stunts on jackass, that masculinity is the same masculinity that prompts the firemen to run into the burning building and save the baby. The ri so it's risk taking. It's, it's the risk taking. Yes, it's back to this. How idea. is it? How what is yes. the context that it is exactly, used exactly. in? And so whatever is convenient right. to a female yes. imperative, that's non toxic. That, that can be an when, when the floodwaters right. rise and yeah. you right. need men to save you from the floodwaters. Yeah. That's non toxic. It could be an masculinity. unhelpful expression yeah. of it, or yeah. or a positive yeah. one. And so that. Uh, Let's take risk taking again, because this is all more men on average, more, more, more risk taking than women. Yes. G good or bad? Answer, yes. It yeah, depends. Both. Yeah. It depends What's the context? entirely. When you want someone to run into a burning building to save a stranger, mm -hmm. uh, good. <laughs> or, mm -hmm. or maybe explore or something like good. Right? When it leads them to do something dangerous to themselves or to others, bad. Goldman and Sachs. So what yeah. we do is we... we, the, we Pro-social, we, we, anti-social. So we have mm -hmm. to learn, whoever we are, to say, okay, here are these proclivities. When and how should I express them? When is it going mm. to be helpful to express them? When mm. is it going to be pro-social to express them? And mm. the thing that a culture does is help us learn that. But it doesn't teach itself. It doesn't happen it's automatically. Downstream. It yeah. has to mm. be learned. And I had this quote from Margaret Mead, which I've used a lot because I just, I, I, I've, I've used it so much that I've, I've got it basically to memory. Margaret Mead, the anthropologist said, every known human society has rested on the learned nurturing behavior of men. This behavior being learned is quite fragile and can disappear quite quickly under circumstances that no longer teach it effectively. Mm. And the reason I think I've got that committed is because every single word of that feels true to me is that this idea of learned nurturing behavior, and she, she means nurturing in a broader sense, by the way, like caring for the community, caring for yeah. the tribe. But like men mm. can nurture, but it's more learned for men, right? Mm. So we have to right. teach it. 
-hmm. And if we don't teach it effectively, it will collapse. And so it seems to me crazy to say that we don't still have to think about how do you go from being a boy to a man or a girl to a woman? That's a cultural task yeah. that we're all engaged see, in. It doesn't do it by itself. That learning process right now, I think, is at the root of why we're, the conversation we're having, the larger conversation we're having, at least in the manosphere and really in popular culture now, is like, why are guys such pussies? Why are guys manginas right now? Why are, why can't we find guys who like will will man up and take responsibility? Yeah, but to use honest, that language. Why do you use that language? Though? Well, the reason so I'm using that, use that because language, I'm using you're... that language because that's the language they use. That's the language okay. of women on this show use. That's the language that they're using. But you're using, using it now, well. and I think as mm -hmm. soon as you use a term mm -hmm. like that, it immediately makes people well, like react. Because I'm the, because so to okay, that. so let's just say they become more feminized. They become more. Uh, uh, I was just reading but, that we were reading that article last night on on Access Vegas. And we're talking about how, was it, 63% uh, of men are not in relationships and like 37% of women are yeah, in relationships. Just come out. And yeah. so their solution, the, the researcher's yeah. solution to this is that men need to become more female and more feminine to uh, appease and to be a better partner for women. And then therefore they will, then they'll solve their problems. I'm like, no, that's actually what's been causing the problems up to this point well, yeah, because, it's... because they're pussies. What, I mean, I, again, their words, not mine, but they, the, the, the fact of the matter is, is that we're saying that men today are just not men anymore. And that's why we're having this conversation on, on God knows how many different podcasts. Well, right? I